Hold with kindness. That's what you do. Thank you. Yeah. That always works. All righty. I think we are live. Oh, right. I'm coming at you again. We have a little bit more. I'm uh, still waiting on uh, one guy to join us. But um, we're doing a little roundtable tonight, just like we did last mm -hmm. week, with a little bit more um, in terms of uh, people. We've got with us tonight Mike Rogers uh, at 60 R E C C E Ricky. on Twitter. I don't know if that's Ricci or Reggie, but uh, we have uh, Karis again from Karis Playgrounds. Um, Mike Rogers from The Plan of Menace, obviously. Uh, a book that is very relevant right now, and we're going to let him get into that. We have Jeffrey Anthony Campos, who is a pencil on Twitter, mm -hmm. um, and who is uh, who I'm going to be. I will be Ben, and we're going to continue to work with through 2020 to help him produce his book, uh, tentatively titled Candle Jack. Mm -hmm. um, I have been running around all day, and I am just. Yeah, the juggle is real. Um, so I just want to start off by letting Mike get a chance to tell us a little bit about himself and tell us about what's going on with him because um, he's going to have to hit up another show tonight and we want to give him, let, let him take the lead. So Mike, tell us about what, say, the last six months have been like for you because I know that's about when all of it kind of kicked off. You're muted. Oh, there you go. Sorry, Bill. Um, That's okay. Everybody hear me okay now, eh? Um, sure, yeah. man. It's been uh, it's been stressful, as everybody uh, um, knows, for everyone the same. And it was stressful in the industry, of course, as well. But um, the people that want to build things and the people that want to create things, um, they keep pushing forward regardless of what happens. And like we've said before with Bill, you know, artists might be sensitive people, but they're also tough as shit because they have to put up with all of this to reflect it. And it gets pretty tiresome holding up a mirror, you know, for so long. But, um, you know, we went to print this week. And so books are being produced right now. And hopefully we'll have them shipped out to everybody. Um, I don't know. People may receive them for Christmas. Maybe they, they won't. I hope some of them do anyway. It depends on the shipping, I guess. And aside from that, we've got... Aside Give from that, we have more of, books, you know, planned for. Go ahead. Give us a little bit of info about the book itself, the Phantom Menace that you uh, you just finished. Who you who you worked with on that? Um, kind of how that came about? Because I didn't get a chance to really get into that. I talked to you up a little bit last night, but I want to I want to let people know sure. about what it is that you're doing and where they can get it, where they can you sure. know help uh, help to promote it, where they can help to support it. Mm -hmm. And so people might know, I mean, maybe they do some of my work that I contribute at Bleeding Fool for a while. And for a dispassionate observer and commentator on our industry and on the scene. And um, I heard about a year and a half ago, well, most people in the community heard about a year and a half ago that somebody wanted a community project. And they were looking for submissions from YouTubers and writers and artists and all sorts of different people all over the community in the industry. And of course, the community at the, you know, in the Fandom Menace was quite enthusiastic and a lot of people put in contributions, myself included. And then it kind of went quiet and everybody just assumed that it was being worked on in the background. I hope I'm not lagging out here. Nope. Um, good to me. And so we didn't hear anything. And of course, real life, you know, is real life and things go on. And so after Christmas, I didn't hear anything. Last year, I hadn't heard anything about the project or what was going on with this particular fellow. And a mutual friend flipped out from the fandom fathers from the fandom collective. Uh, he re reached out to me. That guy was working on that project. And I said, yeah. And he said um, he's discouraged and he doesn't have any. Now that you have this situation stabilized and you have your time available again, Mike, you should think about calling him and seeing if he needs a hand and so that's what I did and purely as an editor to help him format and organize because I already knew he had been collecting things for quite some time so I knew he had lots of information not quite how much he actually had it was kind of a shock it's like three quarters of a million words but um so I had to break it into five volumes. And so I think on the second day, I, he, he was like, he'd never worked with anybody before. And I think everybody here's worked in collaborative. Pro like the 
game, I guess. But he wasn't familiar mm-hmm. here with that sort of process. He's like, he's like, well, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, just send, send me a chapter mm-hmm. and I do what I do. And then tomorrow you just tell me. He, he said, tomorrow. I said, yeah, send me your chapter. He goes, well, it's like 10,000 words. I said, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, he sends me the chapter and the next morning at 830. And of course, I'm hoping to get some work here. I want my page rates. And so I'm waiting 830, 930. It only takes an average person 20 minutes to read 10,000 words. What the hell's going on here? You know. And so by two in the afternoon, I finally get an email and it's Steven. And he says, you know, I don't know where to start. And I'm like, oh, here we go. And so he goes, I wouldn't feel comfortable if I didn't have you on as a co-author because you've taken something that took me months overnight and done what you've done here. And I don't understand. And I'm like, well, I I guess give me three or four days to come up with some kind of a contract and I'll think about it and let you know. And five days later, I sent him some paperwork. He agreed. And that was that. Nice. So we went to print this week. We went to print this week. So awesome. um, That was July. That was July 19th. And like I said, my copy edited version was delivered on October 17th. So, you know, what's that? August, September, October, three and a half months for quarter million words. Wow. Not so bad, um, bad. you guys ran a no, Kickstarter not, for it, right? Well, we had an indie or not an Indiegogo, a GoFundMe that Stephen had established when he first announced the project like that while, while back that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. But because he didn't have any help and he, you know, we're old boomers and we don't know nothing about publicity and we're just kind of neophytes before I was even involved in the project. He um, was just trying to raise some production money to be able to help with some of his costs. And so we didn't get really any traction on that at all because he didn't have anybody helping him and nobody to really help him retweet or get his exposure to this out there. And so once I came on and I revamped everything and sort of had stuff to present Then we got a a big show with Geeks and Gamers, with Jeremy at Geeks and Gamers, and that immediately launched our GoFundMe um, over the top. And so that was able to sustain all the living expenses and the time and all the crap that's involved with, you know, getting a book put together. And when we were ready with, you know, that was for production costs. And when we were all ready with the book, we launched our Indiegogo to do our distribution. And I wanted to sell 250 copies. So that's what I ordered from, from the printers that we're using. I want to keep it extremely limited to the IP is protected by the consumer and by the owner of the IP. And that's it. No middlemen, no. And so we sold 219 units. So I was pretty happy with that. And like I was saying to Bill, we're big because we're small. I hate Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the way I, that's the way I look at it. That's well well put. put. Now, um, we talked a lot about last night, um, about, the experiences with crowdfunding. We talked about kind of monetizing, how to monetize being creative. Uh, Mike, you seem like you've gained a good amount of experience in, in the recent, um, in the past few months doing this. And we've been talking, what, maybe like four or five months now. I'm trying to think about it. It's been since about, um, sometime this summer that we, we, we ended up, uh, I, it's I, 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 it's a little vague for me. I remember we were either on a stream together or we were kind of in a hangout. I think we were in a hangout with. I think, uh, we, were, I think we were in a couple of creators' hangouts. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what it was. And then yeah. And then we got once I once I had the Streamyard Studio set up when everybody started making the switch, and we basically had more available time for each other. All the well, more places where people could go and do work during the day. Then that's I think that was in June. Yeah, because it was just a little bit before the project uh, came to me completely. So I, I think it was in June when we really started talking. I know we talked a lot in January before I went offline for a while, but really we got back together with the new studio in June, I think it was. So. Yeah, because I know it was right around the time they got rid of Hangouts, being able to stream to YouTube, and then StreamYard came in and filled that gap right quick. And then me and you, you started just being yep. like, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this open. I'm going to test it out. You left it open for like six days or something like that, like to see if you could just crash it. And yep. it didn't crash. So you were like, this is stable. Yeah. And and there was just a lot of times where me and you talked just like off, you know, off the record. We talked, you know, not streaming live, just kind of doing a hangout like that. And and, and I yep. remember you talking about tool. it. 
And um, and I'm kind of yeah. on the outskirts of that community. I'm on the outskirts of like Comicsgate. You know, I did my little investigative journalism aspect of that. Um, but sure. to see where you were then without getting into without blowing your spot up about anything personal to where you are now is like sure. night and day. Mm. Congrats. Well done. Well, we don't, well done. We don't get, we don't, we don't give up bill. We get yeah. knocked down a lot, but we don't give up. Now. Um, so uh, it ended up being, it ended up being a winning, a winning way. And I learned like speaking up like these, to all this different aspects of the industry. I mean, I was the same way as a one. So watching all these projects, especially in scenario, because it deals it directly in literature. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. sometimes in a different medium than the mainstream consumes anymore. And maybe comics is, you know, more and more of a niche thing. Fine. But learning how to independently produce and distribute those kinds of literatures is something that all independent literature needs to learn from because there's been some pretty nasty lessons that have been learned in the last two years. I can tell you and Bill will agree. Um, and so my number one recommendation to anybody is don't do anything with crowdfunding until you're ready with a product. Yeah. Um, like I can second that for sure that you're going to show. Mm -hmm. Thank you, know, you. Don't yeah. um, Good to know. there are people who have previous reputations who experience that they can demonstrate things that have already been successful and that's one thing and so maybe they can run it on faith but for the most you know the best thing that i can tell you is do it for free do it yourself have it ready as best as you can get the help that you need to help you make it the best that you can and then when you think you've got something that you really like then you offer it out to the world and i guarantee you if you like it somebody else out there likes it too and my concept as a publisher is tiny little print runs that are for very particular readers um, that want to have that they can put back on their shelves and look after things like we used to comic books in the past where the value actually means something and it's not driven by some speculation. The only people that have the books are the people who then they should be the owners of the books. And if they want to mm -hmm. move the price of that book up and down, that's up to them after that. They're the ones that invested in it. Yeah. So it's a new way of doing, it's a new way of doing books. Fine. It's, it's low risk because, uh, for the unit price per book that I work in and literature, I know comic books is different because of the artwork and we have to pay our pencilers for God's sake. But, um, with just regular literature, the unit price can be brought so low and distribution is so easy as long as you have publishing in different areas so that you have coverage that independent books and people that want to do fan fictions and people that want to do niche literature, there is a space for that. And like I was talking with Bill, that's the kind of platform. I don't, I, I'm not familiar with anthropomorphic um, parts of our industry or culture, but to me, the literature is the literature. And if somebody wants to make it read well and present well for people to appreciate what it's supposed to be, they help to do that. And that's what I want to do as far as there's Imagineers in our community, right? There's Imagineers, there's technicians, you know, there's all sorts of different people and the collaborative beauty of it all is that we can be our own little specialist and there's going to be someone that needs us out there somewhere and the industry is open and accessible and that's what makes it such an incredible place because people can find each other easily i'm going to stop talking now one of the things <laughs> one of the things that i learned from you in watching you do it in our talks is the aspect of timing tell me a little bit about how you planned everything kind of around the timing with the release of this book. And I think that's a very important thing with crowdfunding, but like you, you, ta you, you talked a little bit about um, having a finished product, having a product that's ready to go. But the timing I think that you made is kind of impeccable right now, given the release of the, what is to be the last of the, you know, trilogy of trilogies um, yeah. about the Star Wars movie. So if you like, just talk a little bit about that, because that, that made me redecide on on what to do in terms of crowdfunding with thunder chickens and pushing it back till the beginning of the year um for a, for a variety of reasons obviously the holidays and the busyness and uh, everybody's lacking funds around the holidays but talk to me a little bit about where that came in and where you're at with that now oh. Oh. did mike freeze i don't know what happened did he hit me he looks frozen yeah, you, Mike looks frozen. Either that or he is really thinking about that question. There we go. <laughs> if I you could have it out. 
Oh, lag monster. We're uh, lagging. Technical there. difficulties. That's okay. It happens. Yeah, we'll, invite, we'll come back in. We'll put him back in. Um, all right. Well, while we're waiting for him to come back in, Karis, Jeff, how are you two doing tonight? Doing great. Thanks. A little tired from the day, from the day job, but okay. All right. I had an interesting meeting with a fellow creator today. And of course, he's going through maybe for the first time that that valley, that deep, dark despair where it's like, mm -hmm. I'm never going to succeed at this. I've got no money. I have no future, no prospects. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so I listened. Uh, you know, I let him get it all out. And then I said, well, congratulations. This is your first breakdown. Uh, may you look forward to many more <laughs> because, you know, like we have to, like we, we, we were just talking about timing and crowdfunding and sometimes you can't help it. Your timing is off. Like you chose this moment to create this thing and this wasn't the time for that. Um, you know, and it's important for other creators to know Everybody goes through this, right? Um, you might think, oh my God, like there's just no way this can succeed. Of course it can. It just, maybe your timing is off and maybe it's not, not got nothing to do with you, right? Maybe it's just the timing, but you've got to keep on working at your craft, producing stuff, even if it's not working out financially, then just put it out a little slower, do it in bite-sized mm. pieces, whatever you can right. do, you know, but produce, keep producing, keep climbing because you're going to get there. You absolutely are. Mm -hmm. I agree. I definitely agree. And I definitely, you know, I, I had the experience of running um, Thunder Chickens through uh, Kickstarter um, a few years yeah. back. And, um, and we just, we, we just, fell short of our goal. Yeah. And a lot of that was inexperience on my part. I had um, uh, uh, another creator who had funded, uh, who had gotten um, several successful Kickstarters funded um, who like once I, I started it and, and I was just like, I had to kick it out the door. Mm. Yeah. Part of it was just that I had to, to, to put it out there. If I didn't start it, then I was never going to start it. You know what I mean? In yeah. a way that, that it, but it was, it was a test run and, 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 you know, I wasn't ready for it. Um, uh, I, I wasn't, it was bad timing. You know, uh, my, my, my book is, is more of a father son story. When I released it, it was closer to around mother's day. You know, um, there were so many aspects that I could have better thought out. And, um, and, and, and the thing that I was, uh, getting to with Mike, who I, you know, it looks like we're still having a little bit of trouble with, um, the thing I was getting to with was he had, um, he had, uh, kind of planned it and then talked to me that he planned it in the background so that this was going to be coming out right around the same time that this last uh, movie of the trilogy of trilogies was coming out so mm -hmm. that, um, so that, you know, it was something that people were already talking about. You know, it was going to be a hot topic that was on people's minds and on people's lips. And and that made me rethink of like, you know, I was I was ready to just push it out the door again this summer. But I wanted to have the whole first issue completed so that we can mm -hmm. kind of launch from that. Um, uh, and we're still waiting to see what's going on with Mike to see he might be having a little bit of lag. Am I, um, can you guys yeah. hear me now? Yeah, we, yeah can hear you. we can hear you. There you go. Tell us a little bit. Tell us a little bit about uh, what I was talking about with the uh, the timing it with this last movie. So for me, um, it really, once I, it really took, and I know what you mean when you say, when I was talking to you about this plan that I came up with, and it really took Steven sending me his material and I could see the scope of what he had. Um, and once I had it organized in a way that made it, because the way I have separated the material, the first volume is basically a, how did we get here? And so it is a journey through the industry, starting with 2012 around Gamergate, yeah, all the way through Battlestar and Doctor Who stuff and Ghostbusters and all the destruction of all the IPs and a little bit of Comic Skate stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, to to see how everything kind of branched together, and so really, it's a how did we get here mm -hmm. um, thing. I, I know Disney is going to be very upset with the book, or they think they are, or somebody thinks they are, or something. But really, what it is is a, a cultural people's history really of our industry and then the following volumes are really going to be okay so now that we know what this industry is 
and the Phantom Menace is the part that we're going to um, celebrate in this particular series. Uh, who are the, all these wonderful people that make up this whole place? And so the rest of them are essentially celebratory kinds of yearbooks about the community, basically. So mm -hmm. I thought not only was it interesting for Stephen to reflect the community back to its own self, but of course it would want to talk about its own self. And of course it would be yeah. interested in itself, um, especially if it was done in a very flattering way, in a way that was meant to increase people's excitement and enthusiasm for creating new things. And so the spirit of the independent literature movement, which includes comics and all of these sorts of things, there already is a creative process that's existed for a very long time. And there's other kinds of creators in our industry that we're crossing over with now that are learning some of our skills and we're sharing all that together now. There's We've got animators that are coming out with stuff um, for after Christmas. You guys just wait. It's going to be an amazing New Year watch. Mm -hmm. I believe it. All right. Um, Karis, Jeff, Jeff, we haven't really got to hear much from you, and I know you're kind of new to all this. And um, I, I, we talked a little bit about how, uh, you know, in the in the Vegas of terms, how Mike was going through a lot. We talked a lot about how all three of us last night had lost a, uh, a parent in this past mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. um, and the struggles of that. Um, uh, to, you know, and, and basically, like, as Mike said, that just the idea of like not quitting that, that the only way to lose the game is to literally give up, take your toys and go home and not create anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us, uh, tell us, Jeff, a little bit about, um, you know, we, 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 Kara said about like, oh, you know, you had your, your first nervous breakdown, wait till your 19th, to, you know, quote the Rolling Stones in yeah. terms of like thinking about giving up. What, what has kept you coming back to it over the course of 20 years for the people out there that are creative that maybe are in a similar position to you that maybe have like you know toiled in obscurity for a long time mm -hmm. and they they maybe don't know what direction to go with it you know what is it that kept bringing you back to it well actually what you said last night um it took me 20 years to write that book and you said you like the book and in the conversation mm -hmm. it took me 20 years to get to you bill <laughs> <laughs> so you could write the book and you did because you saw the connection the father-son connection and I'm, I'm that's actually like i was talking about last night it made me feel good because aha there's an aha connection there you saw it in the book and that's what made me feel you know really good inside it's like i got noticeability so <laughs> and, and like mike says the book can sell itself because of that and once it gets cleaned up yeah absolutely I, I well, have that's that the thing about, that. and that's the thing about art. If you, if you find that you can make some kind of a reaction out of somebody, maybe it's sadness, maybe it's anger. Well, who knows mm -hmm. what it is? But if you can cause some kind of self-reflection in some way, mm -hmm. some introspection, well, then the purpose of not only you getting it out and expressing your own self, but you've also contributed something to somebody else. So, right, you know, exactly. lots of different ways to look at it. Yeah, I try to keep a positive attitude you know as much as i can out of any situation if like i had a crowd control issue there the comic-con one year when i had this out there and one guy just kind of slowed down and he he kind of rubber neck for a minute you know, and then the person behind him running to him and another one I, here i'm sitting at my my thing you know drawing i'm kind of giggling and chuckling you know because this was sitting there and was like i know what he's looking at <laughs> And it made me feel good. It's like I, I caught, you know, caught attention with people walking by, not really caring, you know, because they're on. They want to go see this comic book guy or and uh, like Steve Geiger. He was there from the Bronx. He was the comic. Uh, I don't know if he's the anchor. Well, he did some comics, too. He did the uh, Silver Surfer, I think, because I actually got it in my portfolio bag, a, a, a autograph thing of him. And he's the one who was came around with his little book, and I drew Cardinal Riga Mortis in his little Steve Geiger's he book. He was working with Silver Surfer. I think he inked for Marshall I, Rogers. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I think I'm he, confused. I he think, had a, somebody think, else with him at the table, did. yeah, who had Silver Surfer things. Hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got confused. Yeah, because um, I went to the that table. would have been in the early 80s, Marshall. Oh, no, no. I know who. I think I know who you mean. No, no. I think Steve I know Geiger? who you mean. Geiger? Yeah. He's the one I, I talked to. Yeah, he did a lot of work. One of my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I actually mm -hmm. got to meet him. Yeah, and he liked my he liked my work. He, you know, made a nice comment like, "Well, that feels good." Yeah, no <laughs> he kidding. came over to my table. You know, his his wife was the one bringing the the book around. And I signed, and he liked, it. and he came over and said, "Thank you." You know, like, oh, okay, that's great. Yeah, nice little. Nice. So that makes me feel good. Nice. See those little positive, the smallest moments. It, like you were saying, it just makes me 
keep that drive, you know. Yeah. So at reaction, a knee jerk reaction will make you know keep 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 it going. Mm -hmm. You know, a certain thing, and uh, you know, just like coming up with this, well, it's just I mean, an idea. Can... The candle's always lit. He can slice that candle into so many pieces, but that candle is still lit even if it falls to the ground. And it's it's kind of like in midair right now, mm -hmm. and that's why I came up with this. He's kind of swirling around doing like a karate, a, a different kind of martial arts kata with the sword, but and I didn't really finish it with the cape and this in the background over here. This is one of the, he's fighting against, uh, battling against uh, his own brother, Berwick, I think, and over here, which I didn't finish. Which I gotta finish this or just leave it just like it is and start another one, <laughs> or you know, go into Photoshop, scan this thing, and go into Photoshop and just Photoshop them in. You know, I'm, I'm fine with uh, you know, with someone I'm working with to alter my artwork slightly. That's fine. As long as it, it gets the message out there, like I said, the book is more of a statement. I feel now, after twenty years of nurturing and aging, and like a fine, you know, <laughs> like the the bitters at the bottom, but the bitters at the bottom of the bottle, the dregs, bitter dregs. But um, uh, it, it ages like a fine wine, I think. And with every little time, you know, that this moments I've stopped and I want, like I was telling Bill, I wanted to throw it away, but I kept going. And there was a couple times, I, and the computer died and crashed, and I was like, "Oh, did I lose it in you know the hard drive?" And luckily, I had saved it. You know, when my computer, one of my computers I had actually built died, and um, and I thought I was lost forever. Yes, yeah, so I just want to interject here: save early, save often. For God's yeah, sake, save your I work. Learn that, my yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I cannot so count how many day. hours, how many hours of work I have lost due uh, to just not saving things, or right. you know, working on all dinosaur machines that I that, that mm -hmm. weren't uh, up to snuff. And um, speaking of your art, Jeff, I uh, intended to open this up. Uh, yeah. last night, uh, whenever we were streaming, and we didn't get a chance to it, but Open I've had it here. Yeah. yeah, and I, I've had, I've got, I got it here, and uh, oh wow, there's even a little, a little, uh, what is this in here? Is that like another little mini pen sketch in there? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I want to check this out sketch. because no pencil, pen only. <laughs> because uh, you uh, have done, I now I had had Steve do some. Yeah uh fan art but it wasn't you know it wasn't really fan art it was like hey man you want to draw some some art uh for for this you know whenever we were doing the first round on on kickstarter but you officially have done the first piece of actual fan art like of your own volition mm -hmm. of scratch from thunder chicken oh, I I love it. Scratch. Teenage scratch. and yeah. i have to uh, yeah teenage <laughs> version i have to back up because this thing is so big it's awesome and, yeah. um yeah but right. i'm gonna have this thing framed up and put it right above uh my desk right here especially because going into 2020 and 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 with really uh giving this a second round in terms of mm -hmm. doing the crowdfunding, it's, it's something that'll keep my, my eye on the prize, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. thank you yeah, so Lord. much for that, for sending that over, man. Like I, you know, like I said, I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to make sure that I gave you props for that and showed it off on the stream because, you know, that is officially the first Thunder Chickens fan art, you know, and, and it looks like there's a little, a little, let's see, yeah, right there of yep. uh, a pen oh, sketch of, of Cardinal Rigor Mortis. Am I, All that's pen. correct? Yeah, no pencil. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, like so. Thank you so much for that. These are going to be going up in the studio. This will be the first like original art that is up of another artist in my studio, and it's the first Thunder Chickens fan art. So you got the original art too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's a little laughs> <intro. Yeah. laughs> so I couldn't keep them here, Bill. For another reason is because I'll be moving, and I cannot, like I said, I cannot fight my siblings in court. They're older than me. And they yeah. want half the, they got half the house on, you know, my mom looked at yeah. well, so I have to get out of here. I got no choice. This is well, an example, by the way, of the struggles that no one ever sees. People right. see the exactly. finished product. They don't know what you fought through to get that thing out. Right. And so yeah. I always tell people, please support indie people because yeah. they are literally slogging through life, sometimes fighting through life just to create something. It's huge. It's a big deal to support an indie person. Any first suitors too. A lot of very talented first suitors uh, that do art as well. Which yes. I was impressed. You know, too the ones that had the debt, the the table there at the Comic Con. They were doing art. 
Yeah. And oh, great. I was like, whoa, you know, I, I, it was blowing me away. Some of them, a couple of them there. Um, they, they take, they of course, they took the head off and stuff, but, uh, but still, it was just amazing, you know, that they had. So I wish there was more. It was only, a, it was only a couple at that particular year that I went, you know, but yeah. uh, still, you know, and, um, but two, for two, you know, three whole days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah, with the grand yeah. was running. Yeah. And I still got my badges, my uh, badges from, uh, they're probably in my bag from the Comic-Con. I save them as tokens. Speaking of Comic-Cons, actually, and this is advice I give to everybody. Yeah. The, the biggest creative, like, experience you could have is going to Artists Alley. Like, I mean, yes. sure, you've got your Marvel, your DC booth, you've got your, you know, your whatever, your big name mm -hmm. guys. But if you're going to see no holds barred, nobody telling you what to do, creative right. industry right from the soul, artists alley. Yes. And to a, a somewhat it lesser is. extent, small press. You are going to get the best creative bargain for your buck by spending your dollars at that section because you are literally changing people's lives when you support those sections of a convention. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're helping support them in the, in the world too, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you're getting something well you wouldn't see anywhere else. No. Like for no. example, like you might go to a convention in Ohio and somebody mm -hmm. local there, you know, they only have a print run of like say a hundred books or whatever. Right. And so you're not going to get it outside Ohio. No, this might won't. be the only place you get to discover that artist, right? right? So always go to Artists Alley. Yep. No, I agree. Yeah, I've been doing a slideshow here. Don't mind me. I was <laughs> lucky in that, um, you know, I, I'd worked with Action Lab fairly early on. I'd done a few conventions where I was in the Artist Alley section. And then after I was working with Action Lab for a while, I was always like tabling with them. So like I, I you know, I was lucky in that like I never had to worry about that. Um, I, I never had to worry about sorting out the, the convention aspect. You know what I mean? I was definitely a hired gun and anywhere that I could, you know, they would have me come along just because, you know, they want artists there. They want, you know, as, as many creative people behind the table as possible, uh, especially not just promoting the books, but also, you know, to have somebody, Hey, you need a sketch done. This guy's an artist. You know, he's one of our, our, our did was doing a lot of coloring work at the time. Um, but I'm eager to, I, I, like I said last night, you know, I'm eager to, uh, get myself to, um, to, to a point where I have, you know, a good chunk, if not the whole first volume of Thunder Chickens done so that I can start going into conventions again because I made a promise to myself I'm not doing it without that. Right. Um, now, no. Mike, um, I know you said you have another show that you're going to yes. be getting on tonight. So yep. um, I'm going to let you uh, uh, I'm going to let you kind of run with it. Um, if you you have people out there that are, that are maybe you know they 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 might have just seen the fandom menace stuff you know they might be part of that community and they might be thinking like oh this guy's you know he's got it going on he's you know he's 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 ran this that he you know helped run yeah. this this crowdfunding campaign you know if you had anything that you were going to say to 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 people out there that you haven't already said that are you know seeing what you do and want to do something similar or just want to put something out there you know what would you say if you had their ear? Well, I would say the same as Kara says, is that just create and keep doing it. Um, mm -hmm. The reason that our industry keeps getting bigger and it keeps um, it, it being such an enthusiastic place for people to be motivated to create, because everybody will agree here, I'm sure the worst thing you can do to a creative person is to take away their desire to create. And so this space is a space like a fortress almost that refuses to let that happen it just seems to be that kind of a space and i know there's other people that feel the same way and maybe that's why we fight for it so passionately and maybe that's what also mm -hmm. generates our content and that's what also reflects so well about all the new creations that are coming and you know we get upset in star wars fandom menace land about disney dropping uh what's known as the expanded universe camp from canon which mm -hmm. is literally 35 years of fan fiction and cooperation and collaboration and imagination that was inspired and built upon as a superstructure to the universe that we all know as a mythology and Disney threw it away. Yeah. And all I know is, and all I know is, is that this next decade is our opportunity with this foundation and this community that we've built over the last two or three years now. And if we use that as a foundation to build into the next decade, then we will be building the new mythologies that will be in demand by the same industry that abused them in the previous decade. Mm -hmm. and so we just have to be ready for that. That's all. And so keep creating and work together as best as you can. 
I like that you said that the worst thing you can do to a creator is keep them from creating because uh, there's a I I, I've never was able to articulate that until um, there was a couple short Jordan uh, Peters uh, Jordan Peterson clips uh, from his lectures and stuff where he talks about that that you know uh, if you take if you uh, kind of drive a creative person to the point where they just give up that is hell like absolutely yeah like and 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 regardless of of all the sort of like politics surrounding like him as you know uh in 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 terms of you know the, the the sort of political sphere as it exists nowadays especially online i think that's one of the things even guys that like i i, I tutor a guy and he said oh i don't like him and i was like really i was like i don't i don't I really don't care why people don't like him and i was like well here check out this one and just let me know what you think of this and he was like yeah okay i can i can kind of job with that like because i think that's the one the one thing at least one of the things he touches on in terms of like creative people, especially as he puts it like low tier creative people, people that are like, you know, they're struggling artists. They haven't made a name for themselves yet. They haven't got a great body of work out. And then, you know, you've got to balance the day job. You've got to, you've got to figure out a way to keep the rent paid, keep the roof over your head, keep food on the table, and mm-hmm. then find that little bit of time to create. And then there's people that give up. There's, that is hell for a creative person. Karis, you, you sound like you want to chime in there with something. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, we, the creative people, are sometimes the worst people, um, you know, to 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 call to call out each other. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. like for example, we will do our industry a much greater good by constantly building each other up instead of tearing each other down. You know, and I do see that happening sometimes. You know, online and whatnot. You know, people can get pretty callous or whatever, but. When we reach out and we encourage creators to keep creating, even if we personally might not think they're any good, you know, you keep encouraging because you don't know what could happen, right? You could be, it could be like the next, you know, Art Adams or whoever, I'll just throw a name out there. But uh, by, by encouraging people, you're actually stimulating better creativity in our own industry and making us all look better. Mm-hmm. If that makes I sense. I agree. It very good. Does. Well, and with that, gentlemen, I, I do thank you very much for having me. I'm going to go jump into the other show now. Excellent. Excellent. We're going to have to do like. this. We're going to have to do, we're going to have to do this bill with a round tables of creators with pe- bringing people in uh, on a weekly. If you can manage such a thing. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd Something like to try to start weekly. doing it maybe like uh, uh, at least weekly and like twice, a, maybe possibly twice a week. But just start trying to find some creators that want to come in and talk and 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 you know not talk from an angle of like trying to you know from an ideological angle or not necessarily you know people that are coming in and wanting to, but just people that that, that just want to sit down and kind of have discussions with a wider uh, set of voices. Um, you know, I think we've got a pretty broad range of voices here. I like, but I, again, but we're all guys, you know, we're, we're all white guys. I'm sure somebody is going to take a shot at that. I can't help that. I want to get different voices in. I want to get different people in. I want to get people that don't like me in here. I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to just find people that I'm comfortable with. It's just, you guys were the people that I knew I could reach out to, to, to kind of test run this. And especially, you know, with the new year's coming up, I was just telling a guy riding back from a meeting, you know, everybody makes that new year's Eve resolution, but it takes three weeks for a habit to kick in. So I want to start three weeks before the new year. So by the time the new year kicks in, my resolution is to start streaming more often, get more discussion going, do more live art. Um, but Mike, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you so much for giving us some of your experience. You know what I mean? Letting us know where you're no at. With things. Um, and uh, where can everybody find you on social media and online? Um, I'm usually on Twitter most days. Uh, it's at six zero recce, um, six zero R E C C E. And I contributed bleeding fool. You can check out some of my articles. I haven't posted very much. There's an update there for the Phantom Menace, um, volumes that were released. So everybody can check out some of the updates and how the crowdfunding went. Um, I'll be back to work at the desk there, obviously going into Christmas now that this is in print and I've got a lot of Jeff's um, material to go through now as well. Um, oh, our yeah. volume two is pretty <laughs> much our volume volume two is pretty much all ready for us, Phantom Menace wise for January, because I'm mm-hmm. going to run the campaign in January, probably January 10th is tentatively when we're going to run campaign IGG campaign for volume two. Skywalker will still be in the theaters. Um, I already have the Skywalker um, chapters and everything all finished. I only have one chapter at the end, which is the opening weekend. That I'm just literally going to copy and paste into the format, and then we're going to print, and uh, that should be an interesting wow. springtime. And so uh, that's all done. 
and I wanted to have that. That's back to what we were talking earlier when Bill asked me about timing and everything and having things ready. I knew when the movie came, it was going to be a disaster. Um, there's certain people um, in the show we have, uh, you guys can check out on Thursdays and Fridays weekly called The Fourth Wave. Uh, one of our persons there has a contact person in California who was part of this whole 18 pages of script that was out. And there's a bunch of you know pages that have been floating in the background that people haven't talked about, but it's known to be a shit show for a long time. And of course, exactly what we thought was going to happen is going to happen. So mm. it should be a carnival and circus like atmosphere, like it was in the spring of 2018. Um, and I assume that 2020s spring, um, March, April, and May is going to be even more glorious. Um, so everybody enjoy, please go and watch the movie and check it out and support the people that work at Pinewood and, and industrial light and magic and the people that build our dreams, the people that are the jerks at the top that are, you know, breaking such things. They're not the people that build our dreams. They're the ones that take all the glory. So go and watch the movie and hate it and write about it and do whatever it is that you like to do. Cause that's what fandom's all about. And you guys have a good night and thanks for having me. Bill. Hey, man, thank you for coming on. Thank you. For time. And as always much love and infinite mojo to you and super profundo on the early eve of your day, Mike, I will talk to you sometime soon. Love Karis, you too, brother. I'll yes. See you in the morning for coffee. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Karis, Jeff. Now we, uh, we were verbally abusing my friend, Steve, um, <laughs> earlier uh, before we went live. And, um, you know, I, I, uh, He's 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 a bit of a, a miserable bastard. I love him for it, um, but uh, he can be hard to get him uh, uh, to get him, you know, to do uh, what's best for him. Uh, we're, we're, all we're all have we all have. So I want to see if uh, maybe another time we can get uh, maybe we can get yeah. uh, him on here uh, with a few a few different voices. Um, what do you guys? I mean, Jeff, we talked about uh, we talked about um, the book. Mm -hmm. You you said earlier about an idea you had. I want to get kind of like an idea of what you guys are going on. I'm gonna let Karis run uh, yeah. first. Like, what are you working on right now, Karis? Uh, you know, what are your plans for 2020? You know, the, the whole topic was how to survive as an creative in 2020. What's your plans? What what's what what to look out for? What are you working on right now? What do you have on the back burner? You know, let me know what's going on in your creative existence right now. Uh, the short answer is that I've always got something going on, and I think that's true of any creative. Right now, my big project is called The Legend of Drippy Jack, and it's basically a Friday the 13th summer camp parody comic where instead of murders at a summer camp, uh, the because it's a fetish comic, um, the victims all end up in diapers, which, you know, <laughs> sort of softens that blow. Um and yes, I am fully aware of the tongue-in-cheek nature of like fetish stuff to me has an intrinsic humor to it, uh, especially the diaper stuff because it's so inoffensive and ridiculous in a way. Um, but it it's it's like it's happy for the people that like it, you know. So there's a there's a, a very positive vibe to it. So even when I'm doing a horror story, I kind of have to put that comedy into it, that little sort of Saturday morning cartoon sort of feel to it. Um, that should be complete in the first quarter of 2020. My next big project is uh, I'm actually doing a kind of a, I don't even know if you could call it a parody, but uh, along the same vein as Bugsy Malone, I'm doing a mm -hmm. Prohibition era uh, fetish comic where instead of Prohibition being against alcohol, it's against <laughs> chocolate milk. So all the characters, <laughs> <laughs> all the characters I are... Like I like that. Thank you. Well, they're all you know, the children. The internet loves their chalky milk. Well, exactly. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I have this idea that all the characters are like little kid furries, like a little baby furs or whatever, but they're all dressed like gangsters and they talk like gangsters and like, hey, use mugs. And, uh, oh, and they have squirt <laughs> guns instead of Tommy guns. So the world is very childlike, but it is juxtaposed with this... 1920s gangster noir um and so i that, that bugsy malone just popped into my mind and that's i'm calling it big mama's boys and uh, that's my big <laughs> that thing. title is so good because i took it had to take a lap around my head <laughs> big not just big mom like you're a big mama's boy but they're big mama's boys big mama is obviously 
She's you know, the gang the leader. Context, the ga- yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, I love that. I, I really, really like that. Well, good. You know, we talked it, about, I was, I was going to hit you up to draw it, Bill. So I'm was, glad that, you like was that the project <laughs> we talked about? Because I know you were talking about, you know, we had another project that we're working on um, that, that veers more towards the mainstream stuff. Um, and you said, oh, hey, you know, those are shorts anyway. Let's let's put that on hold after you finish the last page of this story. And I want you to try work, to work on this other book. Was that the one that you were talking about? Yeah, that's the one. It's been in my head I for like, a while. Uh, and you know what? I, I haven't thought of... Of uh, but was it Bugsy Malone? That's the name Bugsy of the, I Malone. Thought about that movie in like twenty years. Yeah, I used to love that flick as a kid. Oh yeah. So like, I'm gonna have to pop that on and just like for nostalgia's sake. Um, yeah, that's uh, I, I I really like that idea, and I think that's something that like we could have a hell of a lot of fun with. Um, is there anything else that you're working on right now or anything else that you've got planned or even anything else that you've been popping around in your head well, in terms it, of ideas? Like we were saying, like big projects demand big, big commitments, right? And yeah. mm-hmm. quite often they're going on in the background, but at the same time, you've still got to keep your presence on social media, on like you've got to still publish even while you're waiting to publish, which is so weird. Um, And that's why I do the little short things. I have like a a segment on my website called Dear Karis, and it's like sort of Dear Abby, but it's people who write in their their experiences uh, with fetish things, and I turn them into comics, little short comics. Yeah. Um, And so I do those while the bigger stuff is, is being done in the background. So like drippy Jack is happening right now in the background, but it's like, you know, one page every two weeks kind of thing. Um, And so I do the little short things. I have a comic uh, set in the eighties. It's called Daryl. It's about a big lion who basically manipulates and controls his friends, but in a way that fetishists will enjoy. Um, so, uh, I've got that going on. Uh, and then there's always, like I say, little shorts, little dear Karis things that I throw in there just to make sure that people are aware, Hey, I'm still producing. It's still happening. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, Jeff, you were talking to me, you had, you said you had an idea earlier for something like a kid's book. I don't know how, you know, I don't know if or how much you want to get out of that, but you kept, uh, you kept uh, uh, what, what were you calling me in the chat? In, in oh, the- it was uh, 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 Sir Sir uh, Smythe. Yeah, <laughs> Sir Smythe. Uh, the uh, Alphabet Knight or something like that. I'm trying to yeah, rhyme. I, yeah, uh, there's something about that that like kind of rings. That just rolls off the tongue and, and yeah, it just was something I like, driving home. It just all of a sudden. Sometimes I get these. It was a quick image of a knight battling a you know the letter blocks or something. You know. Get out of here! Yeah. You know he's smiting, he's trying to smite him with the sword, but uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, but it just came up, you know. I, it was just an idea I'm just throw out there. Um, as a kids, I was thinking probably yeah, it could even be a kids book. It doesn't have to be, you know. I'm just thinking with the letters, it could be an alphabet kind of book. But absolutely, yeah, yeah that would actually, yeah, that, that would be a big yeah. sale. I I told uh, Karis one time before one of his properties, I said you should turn that into a, a kids book. And, and, and of course, like me, I'm thinking like, how do you make it the most marketable? You can make it a kid's book that about like, you know, about your party training. And Karis was just like, I, you know, that, that character doesn't work that way. Like, <laughs> like that, you're probably not the best character to represent how to get potty trained. Like, <laughs> um, now where you said that you started, you've already started working on book two of yes. this while Mike is sorting out volume one. Right, right. Um, I want to get that done right. Since he's already taken, he's got a full control of book one. Uh, I got to work out, finish book two. I got to, it's a long way to go. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm getting my crib notes together and stuff. I know I do a little drawing here like I was doing Gareth, but I want to uh, hit on the computer there on my laptop too with my notes and um, just, you know, whatever pops in my head. Even during the day of, at work, I'd like to collect, gather them and throw them into the story. You know, even if I got post-its with me, <laughs> just, yeah. to, you know, I have to have, I got to write it down or I'll forget it. Um, that's the key thing. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't know how many good ideas I've lost that I've gone. Oh, that's a really great idea. I'm going to start, I'm going to have to break that down tomorrow and start playing with it. And then the next day I'm like, 
what was that idea because it was so good right. and now I can't remember a single element of it. Because it you like always it. think it's you'll perfect. remember the good ideas. You'll yeah. think, yeah. oh, that's stuck in my brain. No. No, you have, no. you need a, a notebook for an idea net. Do. Absolutely. <laughs> do. Because I get interrupted and I'll forget it. You know, somebody will come over, it's like, oh, I'm right, it's a right down. Jeff, can you do it? Oh, I'm like, ah, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. like corporate America. I'm tired of it. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't. I'm. I'd love to leave my job right now. It it pays the bills, but it, it's just not what I'm feeling. I guess right. Right. Now. And, uh, right. and I'm approaching sixty next year. That's another reason. And yeah, you know, it's getting close to retirement time. But I don't want to retire. I want to semi-retire. I want to keep going as long as I'm. My blood's pumping into my heart and, and brain. And whatever other gray matters up there. Well, that's the great thing about what we do, right? Like, uh, there is no retirement age on creativity. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's right. Absolutely. And well, that's why I said I, I, my, you know, I, I start that I tell people that that they say I, I, you know, I don't, need, I don't know what I want to do. I may think I want to go to school, but I have no idea what I want to do. And I say like I just can't relate to that. Like, and they say like, oh, I want to retire, and I'm like, I want to die with an unfinished drawing on the table. Right, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, like exactly that's where I'm at with things, you know, I draw, die at the drawing table, yes. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully, by then I'll be able to take, you know, maybe a vacation somewhere between here and there. That'd be nice, you know, yes. to a point where there's a little bit more financial stability from the creative aspects to be able to, you know, slow down a little bit, enjoy life a little bit, you know, yes. like today was very much the juggle and I felt right. bad about not being able to get down and get as much work done. I'm still putting the last couple finishing touches on that, uh, on that pin up with the colors, but I wanted to uh, sit down and start, uh, playing around with some more design. And I figure since I have the reference right here in front of me, you know, in cold, hard ink, um, to play around with a little sketch of uh, Cardinal rigor mortis. Um, I hope I'm doing it justice so far. Um, I yeah, love it. You know, taking it, taking it directly from, uh, from your, your ink sketch and from the reference yep. stuff that you've sent me so far, um, just to get some of the basic shapes down. And I've yeah, I, I tried to start with I, things. I try to keep them basic with the collar, with the, the triangle, just keep it. You want to make it familiar to the, when you too, you know, maybe I'm just, I'm not really pushing the issue, but I, I'll let you take care of that. But, you know, try to keep familiar shapes and stuff with the characters, I guess, too, you know, consistent. Yeah. You know, so yeah. recognize it. Boom! That must be the cardinal. You know, because he's got that huge beak. He's bigger than. And I do the descriptions. He's bigger than his brother. You know, he was a he that he called when they called Rigor Morris because he was stillborn. <laughs> you know, yeah, he came up, came breath. You know, came back to life for some reason. And it, that I described in the book why he was called that. So, um, and just say like Berwick. Berwick was shorter in stature. He had more of a you know albatross kind of look because of his mom and. You know, Azuka, and and just you know, I, I try to roll it as best I could, you know, with the characters. And oh yeah, them. yeah. And and with this guy, I'm I'm trying to go like I was taking the what the reference basically of I've got the um the hawk up. Um, I you know, I can't even show it to itself because it's literally on the machine that I've got that I'm recording with. Um, that one of the other characters. Um, that, that I've already done some some conceptual work for. Mm -hmm. I've got that up and I'm trying to take, you know, you have a very specific sort of face shape and very specific yes. features on this character in your designs. And I'm trying to apply it because he's described as the same kind of hawk as that character so that I'm trying to take that that big beak mm -hmm. but give it sort of a little bit of a hawk shape because of a hawk's very right. specific right. Yeah. Yeah. shape. Make it so, more normalized, not over... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but trying to I take as much from yeah. the reference as possible while also just doing, you know, only changing or only refining the things that like, you know, right. like keeping the shape aspect, only refining the things, you know, that I feel like I can add to and not subtract from the work. That right. you've already exactly. Yeah. Time. Giving you all the artistic license for that. Yeah. Yeah. For what I do for my drawings, yeah, I try, like I said, each one's unique. I'm tr I try my hardest to make them the same but yeah it's just uh i, I probably because of my job I, I try to practice as much as i can when i get home but some days it's like ah oh yeah, <laughs> I get home, oh, I, yeah. I get mm -hmm. first from uh my nerves or whatever from you know the day the day's run but, and i've struggled with that especially recently um i think to talk to you guys um uh, a little bit behind the scenes kind of started uh, uh, seeing this girl and, and she doesn't know what that creative thing is like where, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I just need some me time, 
because yeah. I need to be able to dive all the way in. And even if like, even if someone's being really considerate, even mm -hmm. if they're being, even if they're being like quiet as a church mouse, that sometimes just having somebody else in the room, you'll yeah. just, you'll know they're there. And yeah, even right. if, and it's not even a bad thing. It's not like, it's not indicative of them. It's just how fucking fickle we are as creative people. Like what assholes we are. We're like, we have to like, you know, you, you, you kind of have to have almost a, um, a sacred space. Yeah. From which you can space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and, 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 yeah. and, and, and and but she's she's being very understanding of it and, and, yeah, and oh good and, well, that's great I, I that's love great. having her around she's she's that's just, fantastic she's she's done a lot to like make things just lit up in my life uh, as of late and 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 I wouldn't want her to ever think like you know that I that I don't want her around it's just a matter of like she doesn't she doesn't understand that aspect of creativity where it's like I have to just be locked in the fortress of solitude by myself for hours and then come out looking like Robin Williams from Jumanji and it's uh, <laughs> what is it? I don't know. yeah <laughs> More, that scene where Mark goes upstairs and drops his pants. <laughs> a good way to look at it, uh, a good way to explain it is, if I were going to work, you wouldn't expect me to be around, right? Yeah. Yeah. Think of this as me going to work. It's just that I'm not going anywhere. But yeah. I, for all yeah. intents and purposes, I am not here because I'm in my world. I'm in my work. I'm in the zone, whatever you want to call it. She got a little yeah. offended when, when we talked about like if you know if if things things go well and if and, you know we end up we were to end up moving in together. I said, yeah, I'll be in the studio with the door locked. She was like, what do you mean with the door locked? I'm like, yeah, with the door locked, with the headphones <laughs> in. So if you knock, you're knocking that with the volume in my headphones as loud as possible because you just it's like that. You have to expect that this is work time. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the, and and I understand. I'll 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 procrastinate for as long as I will on Facebook right. or on Twitter or on Reddit. And but I'm the one in the back of my head going, you know what you have to do. You know you yeah. have to get to it. You know you have to get to it. What you know you know you're avoiding it. You know all you got to do is start, Bill. Just freaking start. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has that voice in their head, and I used to think I was going crazy at times. Seriously. <laughs> Um, I never, you know, told the doctor about it, but yeah, there's times it's like the voice and there's like another body inside of me that, you know, says, you know, you're going to draw it this way. Now you're going to do it like this and that and that and that and that, you know, and um, <laughs> it, it, it does come up. Like behind me, I have the storyteller bear or whatever character. It kind of looks like a bear. And he came up and he, there's this monster. He's sitting in a Queen Anne chair and this monster with the big jaws is going to swallow him up. And he's, he just paused a moment to finish his book. And it just, it's, it's a little, little things like that, those kind of uh, very creative, imaginative things. And there was a woman that really wanted to buy this. And she was really, oh, how about 100? How about 200? I said, no, I was, I was denying <laughs> myself, you know, a profit because I really kind of like the picture in one sense. He's got the little John Lennon spectacles too on him. And, and so <laughs> I just, I did that back in 06, I think. Yeah, 06. And, um, <laughs> Is like that where I I literally am just like I like that so much I just want to keep it around and if somebody wants it they're gonna have to like make a good offer yeah. like you you can't you you're not gonna undercut how much I like that piece because exactly right you'll, you'll stumble that. upon happy accidents yes. you'll stumble upon techniques new techniques and you'll do a piece and you'll be like I don't really know how I did that I mean, I've got to like look at that like how do I because that an accident right. I, I wasn't really thinking that came from somewhere else now i have to you know and that seems like very pretentious studying your own work to learn from but sometimes it just comes out exactly I, you just said the word magic like i said i had no control over it. it's like almost i have no control sometimes <laughs> i i do focus but all of a sudden it goes it goes on a whole nother tangent you know and i think that's how this came out you know i was kind of focusing on the bear because I remember where I started. I did not start in the face. I st and I don't start on the nose like most people do. I'll start on a hand. I'll start on a tooth. I'll start over here. Yeah. I'm kind of nifted in that sense. Like, oh, are you going to start on the nose? No, I'm going to start way over there in the corner. <laughs> And you know what? That speaks, that. That's when that start. speaks a lot to process, right? Which is something yeah. else about surviving. Exactly. Yeah. You You're surviving as an indie creator, okay? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. good for you to get an education where you can, you know, read books, how to create a graphic novel, right. you know, how to letter comics, whatever it is you're learning from. Great. 
but understand and uh oh, what's the word i'll get to it uh understand that you are gonna develop your own process and it's okay yeah. If it's not what the successful guy, uh, you know, on page 47 does, you know, like, no, like you're going to find your own rhythm. And if it works for you, then you keep it like you use that and you go with that. So what if it's not what's recommended so long as it works? Exactly. Yeah. Don't be like the Joneses. Yes. A friend told me that a long time ago. Don't right. be like the Joneses. Be yourself. Right. Because there already is a Jones and they're right. them. Jones you be you. One on the other side of you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the um I I I learned a lot, especially early on, from a guy named Lawson Wallace. He was a licensing artist for DC and he kind of took me as a, under his wing with uh with um whenever we used to post on the boards. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, when we used to post on the message boards, um the he 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 said, I noticed that whenever you get critiques, you you actually take them into account. And I see you working on it, and, and he kind of took me on as like as, as a mentor. And I used to always call him sensei, but lost in he's an amazing artist, and he, and he knows how to really do all keep things on model. He knows how to be a good soldier as an artist, but also a very classically trained, classical styled comic book artist. And he always told me he was like, sometimes you got to realize like you're going to learn on the job. You're never. You're not. There's a lot of stuff you're not going to be ready for. You're right. going to learn on the job. You're going to take a job knowing that you don't know how to do it yet, but that you can figure it out. Like by right. the time. You know. And what do they say? Experience is the best teacher, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And now, like that's definitely something that for for um, a lot lately, um, I found myself taking gigs where. I don't 100% know what I'm doing because the stuff that I do 100% know what I'm doing, I don't grow there. Right. You know what I mean? And you run the risk of burnout, I think, doing familiar things more so than with that stress of stretching yourself creatively. I don't yeah. think you would burn I, out doing right. something you don't know what to do, you know? Yes. That's a Does that make sense? Point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that actually does because you can because you can maybe do more of the familiar stuff, but at the same time you push yourself and you it wears you down. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it wears you down in a way that you don't get. It, it's almost like sitting in the same position while you're drawing. You know what I mean? Like you're not stretching out creatively. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're you're feeling feeling. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, drawing rigor mortis over and over and over again. I was obsessed with them <laughs> to try to get them down to the right how I wanted them. But you're absolutely right. I I was becoming worn out, you know. Uh, yeah, you had you had to step back I from did. your I work. Had to step back, take a yeah. deep breath. You're absolutely right. I had to and stop listening to that voice in your head at yeah. the same time. And say, go back to your desk. No, no, you you really do. You have to separate yourself and, and take take that quick step back. Well, because I create oh, wow. for a, a niche market, right? Uh, there's there's going to be a commonality to absolutely everything I do. And mm -hmm. sometimes I've got to put it down and walk yeah. away and go, how do I make this one fresh? How do I spin this? Right. How do I do something I haven't done before? And I'm not always successful. I mean, no one's complained yet, but I, I know what I want. Even if the audience right. doesn't know what I intended, uh, you know, they, I'm glad they like what I put out, but I know when I've disappointed myself, right? right? So I know that I need to stretch and take those creative breaks and uh, until I can come to it with a different angle, with a different viewpoint, or even just with renewed energy for it. Yeah, and that's a big part of it. It's just having having that energy to to come at it and having that excitement uh, that, that in a way... Um, it, you you it to have that fuel to burn in terms of 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 that passion of being excited about it being a little bit scared being you know that 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 mixture of emotions of of especially starting a new gig can be you know what it, it, you know as as the stoics say you know the obstacle is the way or you know as as uh, to quote a uh, uh, the title of a nine inch nail song the only way out is through you know all of those things that we attribute maybe in isolation by themselves to negative aspects of creativity or the things that are the challenges are actually the, they're the process. 
Mm-hmm. You know, part of the process is being scared shitless. Part yeah. of the process yes. is, is is being you know not knowing what you're doing completely, but being curious enough to want to figure it out. And you know, yes. imposter syndrome, right? Um, you can be the best there is at something and still feel like I am the biggest fraud. I am faking this. No one has figured it out yet, but they're gonna, they're gonna figure out. I don't know what I'm doing. Meanwhile, you're accepting your, you know, your Oscar or your, you know, your um, uh, comic book award, Joe Schuster award or whatever. And nobody knows. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even Duncan Fagrito, I had a short conversation with him probably maybe even a decade ago on Twitter where I was like, dude, you're a master. And it was him starting to do those Hellboy books. And it was a really amazing page. He was like, you're an absolute master. And he was like, no, I'm not. I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, the more you know, the more you realize how little you know. And and mm. yeah, you know, I would never, I wouldn't even put myself in the same, you know, planet as him creatively. But, um, you know, at the same time, there are people that I remember looking at people and every once in a while, I get that little glimpse, just that little bit, that tiny little bit of lucidity where I'm like, oh, I'm doing that thing now. Right. Like you're where growing, right? I know no matter what I do, I can get it published somewhere. I'm not going to yeah. pretend like I can get it published at like the biggest houses. I'm not going to pretend like I could just throw it at image and they're going to grab it. But I know I can get it published somewhere. Yes. I mean, even with Thunder Chickens, I've you know I've had like um, Peter Semeny from Alterna. He said a couple times to me over the past over the past few years. He said, "Hey, if you need a place to put it, you know, we'd love to we'd love to take that on." Um, and you know, and I'm not sure what I want to do with it. He's definitely one of the people that's kind of on my short list to talk to, just because I I really love the model that they're doing. But I know no matter what I do, I know that my quality of work is at a point where I could get it published. I don't have to worry about that anymore. Right. Nice. Even if it's, right. even if it's a very small house, you know what I mean. Like even if it's a small thing, it's now it's a matter of having the 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Having the um, uh, the 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 choice and having the being able to make the choice of where would this fit best? Right. right. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, you have. It's funny. The the more you improve yourself, the more you put yourself out there, the more options you find that you've given yourself. You know, the more doors open up, uh, the more networking. Uh, and, and this is something I stress to other indie creators as well. Um, what Like what we're doing right now, right this very second, um, we're networking. We're learning from each yeah. other. We are getting ideas just through conversations, um, you know, that we might not have thought of otherwise. And this is growing us uh, in what we do. And I, I cannot stress this enough. Don't create in a vacuum, you know, like get yourself out there, meet other people, uh, do anything you can to inform your work by broadening yourself. Mm, Definitely. Well, you know what, guys, Um, Jeff, you you, you were about to say something. Go ahead, because I think we're going to get ready to close out now. So I'm going to give you the last word, man. Uh, Well, you know, it's a confidence thing, too. And the reason I say that is, you know, you're beginning to figure out through yourself what you're capable of doing. I think a confidence issue with writing I had was I kept sending it to Wild Sound four times. And, you know, they, they still liked it, but they just kept re-editing and re-editing until I finally probably was the only one submitting, oh, you, 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 won, you won this month's, you know, <laughs> contest. I'm like, oh, okay. And we have an option that you can make a movie with it, you know. But still, it was a bad <laughs> – they still said, oh, we got feedback for you. <laughs> He was yeah. the only yeah. one who submitted, but we'll send y'all. We got this real pro who's gonna tear land base your, your story apart, and they did. And I sent it to it, the fourth one, the fourth review. And yeah, but even with oh, uh, we'll make a movie, but yeah, even with Thunder Chickens, I I have, I have a guy named Mike Exner who every single page that I've done, right? Um, whenever I do the whenever I do the lettering, I write the dialogue in the lettering. I mean, that's just how I work. Um, and what I do is I, I write everything visually, you know, I see the story in my head. I know the story beats. I know the basic idea of what they're talking about. And then because that's where, you know, you might as well edit the dialogue there. You know, I already know what they're going to say. I like to have it a little off the cuff. 
you it's, it's it's best that it's there so i do a first pass of the dialogue without any balloons i just lighten the image and i write out the dialogue where it's going to be where how it's going to be spaced basically and generally and then i send those to him and then he gives he goes i would do this more like this i would do this more like this and i take probably 60 percent of what he says some stuff i'm like no i kind of like i kind of like the line or the way i choose to to to, to phrase it there but the majority of the stuff i'm like okay yeah yeah i i, I can dig that and and so it's 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 understanding your limitations as a creative person can be your greatest strength. I know enough to surround myself with people who are better at me at the stuff that I aren't my greatest strengths. My greatest strengths is pretty pictures. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I think well, I think that's, I think we're gonna wrap this up for tonight because I uh, I want to take care of a few things. I want to dive into some more design work for um, the, the the Candlejack characters. I want to mm -hmm. you know to tighten up this uh, this Cardinal Rigor Mortis. Um, for right now, tell everybody, uh, Karis, where can everybody find you on social media? I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Karis Playground, all one word. I'm also on uh, Facebook, uh, Karis Playground. And then I am I have my own website, karisplayground.com. <clears throat> and let's not forget Patreon, kids. You can <laughs> contribute to Patreon. Patreon.com slash Karis Playground. Yep. So All right, Jeff, where can everybody find you on social media and online? Uh, right now, uh, twitter.com slash forward slash psychic pencil. And uh, eventually, I got to get a source. Well, when the drawings come out, I got to think about updating candlejack.com, you know, and make it a lot <laughs> nicer than the Windows 95 version I got up there, <laughs> source code. So, um, once the everything gets settled yeah the dust settles definitely you know what especially nowadays with the with the uh with the the guy did mine through squarespace just because right. you know i came out and 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 and, and especially knows that i'm sure mike knows guys i'm sure <laughs> like i could think of a handful of guys i know that it wouldn't be too right. hard to get somebody in there to just do some of the heavy lifting <laughs> and the design great. work for yeah. you you know what i mean right. um Absolutely. so you said on on twitter uh, candlejack.com anywhere else online where they can find your stuff uh, no, just that. I got Facebook pages, but they're eh. it's yeah. <laughs> I never really promote my Facebook. Really Facebook. Yeah. I've only recently started accepting friend requests from people I don't know because I just always regretted it in the past. But now I'm like, okay, I've got to kind of open this up as an element of my social media presence. Um, myself, as always, Bad Ankle Bill, Bad Ankle Bill on Twitter, Bad Ankle Bill on Instagram, Bad Ankle Bill on Facebook, and the Facebook page. Bad Ankle Bill Art um, and BadAnkleBill.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for being on tonight. Good night, everybody. Um, thank you. You know, I want to. Uh, you know, I definitely want to to start doing this more consistently. And and just having you guys back to back two nights in a row really helped me kind of start to solidify, I guess, the format of it and get used to to not only not only doing it in in practical terms in terms of the actual conversation. And and I I am terrible with wanting to talk over people. I really am. It's it's, it's something I got to work on. But also the practicality of the technology of the of the stream yard which is a, a great a great if you're not using stream yard out there if you guys are streaming whoever's listening to this um check out streamyard.com it is a, is a really really great i mean there's there's so many issues you approach whenever using a brand new user interface on any kind of technology and this was one of the most streamlined one of the most uh easy to pick up user interfaces very visually oriented where you know the little pictures at the bottom below the screen what you guys can't see on the youtube screen they they literally just show you this is what the screen format is going to be if you click this button you know if you click this button if you click this button if you click this button and it's got a little preview there that shows you what it's going to look like when you click that button so it's a really easy to use user interface um and you know for everybody out there that tuned in everybody out there that's listening if you're streaming if you're checking it out after the fact as always whether you can hear this or not whether you can see this or not much love and infinite mojo to you and super profundo on the early eve of your day and i mean that and peace out everybody peace Bye. all right